What is your nutrition plan for race day? I will be shooting for around 100 grams of carbs an hour. Um, most of that will be from Morton 320, Morton, however you say it, 320 satchels in my bottles. Um, I'll supplement that with scratch or water, depending on if it's hot on the day and I feel like I need the extra sodium. And then I'll do SIS gels as well. So to begin when it's cold, I probably won't need the extra fluid. So I'll do a Morton 320 and an SIS gel an hour. And then as we get to like the middle to the end of the race, I'll probably start grabbing um, an extra water bottle or a scratch bottle from the feed zones and try to kind of, depending on how hot it is, probably nurse that second bottle over like a couple hours, like getting my main fuel source from the morning, but also having the other one on board just so if I need more fluid because the, the Morton stuff is pretty strict on 500 milliliters for like that hydrogel consistency for the gut. And I've had really good experience with the Morton 320 not messing me up. I did, when I did Leadville three years ago, I did the same, same program and I was, I was happy the whole race gut wise. With Alveson Fenix sponsored by Four Gold Nutrition, I think we have like some of the best product out there. Um, so I'll do, um, like a carb mix in the, in every bottle that I take, um, particularly at altitude where you're burning through glycogen a lot faster. Um, I think that's going to be especially important. And then we have some four gold also makes really good, uh, gels and bars. The gels are like super easy to get down. You don't have to drink it, take it with water or anything. So yeah, primarily just four gold nutrition. And, um, I think it's, the best out there tend to do like smaller breakfast than I would probably cross before cross country event because before the cross country you kind of have typically a lot more time you know you might be racing at 10 11 sometimes midday cyclocross you're racing afternoon you know <laughs> but with the long distance it's always early morning 6 30 so I probably go for a little oh little bit uh, lighter breakfast because uh, the start will be pretty quick uh, and then start hitting uh, cliff uh, cliff bar blocks and cliff bar shots uh, right away just keep up with it as much as possible uh, I, I worry about like drinking too much before the race because then sometimes you have to pee especially when it's cold and early morning so I typically start drinking more once I'm on the bike racing I don't drink much before before the race uh manage manage the, <laughs> the bladder <laughs> and uh I I probably I kind of played around having a little bit of solid food in the last two races just because it feels good on the stomach um, so at the Belgian waffle ride where there's long sections on the road and you can actually kind of sit in the group a little bit, I, I, I managed to eat half of a cliff bar, which I think really helped me out because it wasn't just like gel or a block. And, um, and then obviously with the higher altitude and the, like the breathing is heavier, you know, when you're at 10,000 feet, it's really hard to chew. Uh, but the Cliff Bar also makes these like uh, peanut butter filled in bars that are much softer to kind of chew than your traditional Cliff Bar. So I'll probably carry one of those as well to try to kind of have some of the solid food half a mark, you know, or whenever the opportunity comes up on the road. I'm not very strategic with the food like you have to eat every half an hour because sometimes you're descending for 10 minutes, you know, so I don't want to have that like complete strategy but I just try to keep up with both eating and drinking from the from the gun so the same as same as usual for me for these long events I'll try and take in roughly 100 grams of carbs an hour and mostly drink mix um, and then some goo gels and probably some rice krispie treats and some other like you could call them solid food but not really you know <laughs> um, nutrition is a challenging one for me um... I tend to, in longer efforts over like, usually over around seven to eight hours, I, I, both times I've raised Leadville, I, I get pretty sick. Um, actually once I finish the race, I get pretty sick. And so I'm a little nervous about that. Um, and I'm just, it's, it's, I think because my stomach 
you know, you're going so hard and then you have the added altitude to deal with that your gut is just shunting so much blood away from it. And I seem to have a real, like, a, a bigger issue with that than others. So I'm um, trying to incorporate some real food. I'm going to make some, uh, Alan Lim has a recipe for these, like, rice and egg bites. Um, and I tried them in training recently and they just tasted so good. It was nice to have some real food that was savory and that was really palatable and easy to digest. Um, but other than that, um, if you know anything about Ted King and our household, we are a big maple proponent. So I'll be doing some untapped maple syrup. Um, and normally I would be using maple aid, um, but I actually will go back to using a um, goo product, Roctane, because I, in mountain bike races, I'm going to use the Summit Tea um, Roctane drink because in mountain bike races I enjoy, or I find it helpful to be able to drink more of my calories and not be struggling to, you know, get food out of my pockets as much. So that'll be one shift from what I normally do. Start eating early and keep eating. Uh, first of all, for Leadville, but um, also for this this lead boat challenge. I mean, it's you got to be eating for the day after. It's not just a one day for for a few of us. Um, so I mean, I'm taking a high carb drink to start in the cold morning hours, and then I'll be kind of switching more to like basic mix and water stuff. Um, bunch of bars. Um, you know, the fact that there are kind of feed zones in Leadville, I'll try to, you know, run light and utilize the musette bag things, which is kind of the, the game of Leadville. It's totally cool there. Um, and uh, yeah, the biggest thing I think is actually going to be the tactics. It's just, you know, for, for us lace, racing the lead boat, it's um, they're, they're instead of every, it's not a combined race, like a normal stage race. So there's guys that are solely focused on Leadville and solely focused on steamboat. Um, so I could see a situation where, because there's so much prize money, for example, in Steamboat, if, uh, if Leadville is not going the way of some people, shut it down and try to save it for the next day. You know, still finish. You, you finish the damn race. That's what you're there for. Um, you don't quit. That's the Leadville motto, right? Um, but, you know, I'm curious on how that will play if guys are going to start thinking about the next day and what they're actually maybe better suited towards. That said, I am thinking about Leadville first and Steamboat secondarily and just try to get through that and then try to race, uh, race some of those favorites. Obviously you want to really be conscious about hydration um, and not just in general at altitude, but especially going into the event, just making sure that you're really hydrated. And in conjunction with that, it's important to be taking electrolytes too, so that your body is absorbing the hydration too, and not just it passing through your body. Um, so goo and salt stick both offer like really great options for me for that. And then for the race, it is drink and eat often and early in the race. So personally, I'll have a combination of water in my water bottles and then also goo rocking hydration drink mix in my water bottles. And I'll do a combination of, uh, the rock pain gels the goo rock pain gels and for a long event for a solid food I really like the rice bars um they're made with sushi rice and I make them savory so they're still like a fast absorb absorbing carbohydrate option but not sweet so it's just a really nice um change from like all the the goo and the hydration drink mix and so you're getting something salty um, and savory salt, eat at least three of those during the race. And then I have like it pretty mapped out as far as, you know, what to be eating and drinking where on the course, um, just because, you know, that is a game changer in your performance and a critical piece to make sure you have dial and have a great plan going into that. Yeah, I that is always plan and execution are two different things, right? <laughs> so I think um, for me, I think 50 to 80 grams of carbs per hour would be something that I'm confident I can actually execute. You know, that's a realistic goal for me. Um, and then I think the way that I do that is going to be critical, you know, because I think 
a lot of the time you can look at your bike computer and say, oh my gosh, it's been 45 minutes and I haven't eaten anything. This is my hour window. And then you just shove in all of those carbs into your mouth. And at least for me, that's never been the optimal strategy. So I really want to break it out across that hour really well. And um, yeah, I mean, I think when I am eating well, when I'm eating that 50 to 80 grams of carbs an hour well, to me as a racer, it feels like I'm almost eating constantly. Probably goes like a high carbohydrate mix in my bottles. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I've got the big ones up to like 140 grams of carbohydrate. Uh, so, Killer. yeah, and yeah, sucking those down. I think if I get maybe three of those in me, uh, should get me pretty far. Um, and then, you know, six and a half hour race. Um, yeah, we want some normal food out there too. So we'll probably mix up some scratch, some uh, what do you call it, rice cakes, um, and then, uh, yeah, gels in between whenever we do it. In. So there's some, some, something hard like lead build, especially at high altitude, um, you're really not efficient when it comes to burning fat. Um, so you really have to stay on top of eating and uh, getting the carbs in. Uh, so, you know, I'll be shooting for like 90, 95 grams of carbohydrate per hour, which is a lot, uh, especially for, yeah, not the biggest guy in the world. So, but I mean, I guess that kind of goes back to the training aspect as well. Um, I've definitely been training in the old gut to absorb all those carbs. Actually, it's kind of changed a little bit. I have um, done a lot of hard enough races that I'm actually having a harder time like getting into like the peanut butter and jelly snacks honestly because they're so dynamic that I can't really take both hands off the bars easily and like I have started um experimenting with like a caloric um bottle mix from scratch like this super hydration hyper hy nope mm, super calorie whatever I can't remember the name. Sorry, Scratch. So I have been doing that and it's working really well. I really like, cause it's like not a super intense flavor. And then I do um, like gels as much as possible. Um, and then I will do my peanut, <laughs> I guess signature at this point, my peanut butter jelly sandwiches on like the whitest, grossest bread you can find. Just like super simple carbs that it just works really well. Um, for me, I am still trying to figure out a good way to get a lot of salt in because I just get sugar fatigue. Um, I just don't want to eat at the end of an eight hour race um, and especially not sugary things. So anyone out there has a hot tip on how to get easily accessible pickles. <laughs> if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it.